do a little bit of workout today. Um, it's raining. Um, and so I'm in the garage and I wanted to get a quick workout I'm trying to get the camera angle to work. So there you go. So I got my squat rack. We got this from Amazon. 260 bucks delivered, man. Can't believe it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing single legged work. Um, I love unilateral work. I think it's the best for cycling, uh, especially for guys that are getting older. Um, we're doing a lot of repetition, whether we're road cycling, BMXing for fun, recreation. And um, I really think that doing unilateral work is really beneficial just to take the ease off the lower back. All right, so let's give it a go. I'm still warming up over here. I did a couple warm ups, um, warm up exercises. I'll show you what I did earlier, but let's see if we can do a workout here for like 20 minutes. Hopefully the audio works. Figure I'd just give this a spontaneous try. So I'm just doing single-legged barbell step-ups. I'm not even going that deep in terms of a knee bend. The hip joint's definitely above the knee joint. And I think I'm pushing about 105 pounds. I'll warm it up and my goal is to get up to my body weight and do a set of three. Now, I'm, I'm keeping the repetitions really low because I'm not really interested in doing a lot, a lot of hypertrophy repetition work because as a cyclist, um, whether you're a road cyclist or a BMX cyclist, we're already pedaling a lot. So I'm already to a point where I really appreciate quality over quantity. Hey guys, how you guys doing? It looks like we got like 10 people on. Listen, if you guys are just jumping on, Greg Romero here going live spontaneously in my garage, um, home gym, it's raining outside, I plan on riding, but I also need to get a workout in. So what a better way to get it done um, from home, right? The advantage of that. Tonight, I'm gonna go live. I have a plan. I wanna talk about recovery. One of my clients from England, and forgive me, I'm resting right now, so I'm gonna probably split here in a moment. But one of my clients from England had a couple questions regarding recovery. Um, as it pertains to BMX, whether it's after a race and, or, or a weekend of racing. And so we're gonna talk about the recovery benefits um, and how it plays a big role in your performance, especially for like a three-day national where you're racing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you race Friday, you gotta recover and recharge your batteries for Saturday and then do the same thing on Sunday. So there's a lot of, th there's a lot of little secrets that um, we could definitely share with you tonight. I'm looking to go live around 5.30. Um, working on some of the content right now for that, and I'm trying to get a quick workout. After the workout, I'm gonna go do a cold plunge and uh, do some work and get ready for you guys. But hey, man, it's good to see you guys. Um, I'm just over here in my garage doing some quick exercises for myself. I gotta, I gotta stay in shape. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, Drop them right now. I, I, I want to be able to see if I can actually, what is this, a flag? Okay, is there a chat? Chat, welcome to live chat. Someone type something in. Talk to me. I want to see if this works. Appreciate you guys. Going up in weight. Going to, I believe this is going to be 135 pounds. Hopefully the audio is good. Keeping the repetition really low. Doing sets of three each leg. Again, single leg step up. One of the most beneficial exercises we could do, especially as we get older, because we don't have to put a whole lot of weight on our back. And so, you know, being Cycling, BMX, gate starts, sprinting, everything's happening one leg at a time. And so I'm finding more so than not, the better that we could be at doing unilateral work in the gym, the better off we're going to be able to specifically generate power coming out of the gate. Second pedal acceleration, first jump acceleration, and so on and so forth. If you guys have any questions, I'm testing this thing out. Again, Greg Romero live in the gym on behalf of BMX Training. Do a little training for myself. 
Um, I'd love to see if anyone can drop a question in on or a comment as I'm testing out this live through the app on the phone. Um, have a lot of fun today. Um, I can't even, re can I reverse the camera? Let's try it. So this is my home garage, really simple, really. It's, it's kind of, we, we got this, we bought this place a couple years ago, but got some bikes over here, but the squat rack, got some dumbbells, some rubber flooring for um, doing plyometrics and whatnot. I'm gonna show you uh, what I'll do for, uh, what I'll do for warm up. Um, but yeah, I still got a lot of work to do, man. Like I still got to, um, there was a hole built in over here. I got to, we got to do some drywall work there. And then I want to put some cabinets up top, take everything off the floor. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay. So I think it's time for me to go up and wait. What do you guys say? All right. What are you guys doing today? Anyone else training? Leave a comment below. I can't see any comments. I want to see if actually anyone wants to interact. There's, looks like there's at least a dozen of you guys right now. And uh, don't be afraid to chat. I don't even know if this video is going to be safe. But let's, uh, let's take it up another level and go with these. So 10, 15, 10. And, and we're going to go up like 150 pounds, I think. We're going to do 150 pounds. 150 pounds is a call. I'm not jumping up. I'm not making any big jumps. Tell you what, I love having a home gym. Does anyone else here joining me live right now? Do, they, do you guys have a home gym? I love having a home gym. I haven't had a gym membership in probably, oh my gosh, 20, 25 years. So it's interesting watching a lot of gym videos and watching the drama go down with people trying to film each other and or film film themselves and and you know people doing deadlifts and pissing people off. You know, just like I don't have time for that. It, it's I love being able to. Just hop into the garage, do a quick warm up, get a quick workout in, and get on about my day. Especially if you're an older, busy cyclist, BMX racer. All right, this is definitely heavier, so I can focus here. Give me a second. Yeah, it would be fun to crash doing this right now live. Because none of you guys will be able to help me. Whew, this is definitely heavier. I feel it. It's been a while. I like this weight. Ah. Of course, I'm not pressing off on the foot off the ground. Ah. Whew. All right, I'm definitely reaching my threshold. Let's count the weight. So we, we're going to count kilos. 20 for the bar. 20 for the blacks. So that's 20, that's 60. And then we got two fives, that's 70, plus 30, right? So we got 20. Oh, forgive me, I'm way off. I'm at 80 kilos. So 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 plus 30 is 80. And uh, 80 kilos times 2.2. Let's bring up my cack and disconnect. Did it pause? I don't know. Hey, does anyone have a comment or a question? Any comments or questions? Is the audio working? Give me some feedback. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. As always, um, Greg Romero live, doing a quick workout, doing some unilateral workout if you're just chiming in. And... My goal today was to get up to my body weight and do unilateral step ups with the barbell. I've been doing a lot of uh, step ups and Bulgarian split squats, uh, unilateral work, doing a lot of unilateral work. And I'm finding that it's, you know, as we get older, 
it's less stress on the lower back. And I think it's, you know, if you think about it, 175 pounds unilateral, well, you could probably say that's easily 300. That's a 300 pound squat equivalent without having to put 300 pounds on my back and impose, you know, a bunch of pressure unnecessarily on my lower back. So, uh, you know, if you're older, you're an older BMXer, I really think this is a way to go. Um, not to mention, I also believe that it's beneficial as we get older to do uh, squats if you can, if you guys have a healthy spine. I, it's, well, if you don't have a healthy spine in BMX, doing gate starts is going to be tough, is it not? I mean, you know, it, it's such a huge demand in terms of um, how much velocity that we have to extend our hips. And if you can't, if you're being inhibited by lower back pain, it's really hard to get a really good, efficient, and, uh, you know, and a powerful gate start, if you will. So I'm, I'm gonna rest about three minutes, three minutes in between each set here. Uh, I'll chat with you guys for a second. Um, any comments? I don't see any comments coming through. I'm wondering and I'm curious if you guys are able to send me a comment. And if you do, I'd really appreciate that. As in that way, I don't feel like I'm just staring at a phone and talking at it. Um, and, and while you guys just have the benefit of just watching me be here, you know, me be, be a fool. And so it would be great if you guys can leave, someone try to leave a comment. That'd be awesome. I don't, I'm looking at the options here. It says here, live chat, all messages are visible. Uh, top chat, super chat. Look, we're just, we're just trying to get someone to chat and interact. First time doing a live off my cell phone. So um, we're definitely getting um, likes. Looks like there's like six people that gave me a thumbs up. So that's good. Um, I'm doing single leg. If you guys are just chiming in, uh, Greg Romero here live at my home. And I decided to spontaneously go live and share what I'm doing today. I'm doing single legged step ups. And then I'm going to end with some Bulgarian split squats and a little core. And uh, if you guys are lucky enough, um, definitely, uh, you guys will be able to watch the entire thing and I'd love to interact with you guys if you guys can. Someone give it a test and leave a, leave a comment. All right, I think this is gonna be my second set at 176 pounds. That's approximately my body weight. And um, so I would definitely call this my working weight where I'm gonna, I'm gonna really get some specific benefits of, of force, right? Uh, I would say I'm doing this so I can sprint better on my road bike. All right, so give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get focused here. Do a couple Wim Hof breaths. We'll speak on out of here in a moment. Feel that. Three reps. Three reps is good for me. Five might be too many. I feel it. It's hard. Very good. Now, I didn't have any plans in terms of how many reps or sets I was going to do. I was really going to just go based off of feel. And uh, really, at the end of the day, I think it's all about watching your form and, and paying attention to your form. Um, right there towards the end of, of each set of each leg, the third rep, I can tell I was wobbly. And so when you start to compromise, when you start to get to a position of compromise on your form, then you know that you're pretty much almost done, right? Like sometimes, you know, as a youth, you know, and some coaches, they, they want to push you for another. And I think that's great. If number one, you have a really good base of strength, experience and strength, and you have a good spotter. But in this case, if you're by yourself, like I am, or you're lifting at a gym by yourself, you don't have anyone else to give you a spot or a partner, then I don't think it's a smart idea to get greedy. And I really don't think there's any benefit. I don't think uh, going after a, a rep, uh, in a position of compromise where your form is a little bit off and you could potentially get hurt is not worth it. Listen, BMX is already hard enough, man. It's easy to get hurt on a BMX bike. Is it not? If so, give me a thumbs up because 
Here's the truth. You don't want to get hurt in training. That's, that's not smart. So, you know, Jim, the gym is, uh, you know, one of my old uh, coaching mates used to tell me the gym is probably one of the most safe place to train. But also at the same time, if you're not smart about it, it's also one of the easiest place to get hurt, just like riding a bike. <clears throat> BMX, man, it, it's really tough, right? Like we're, I would say we're right up there with almost like combat sports, you know, hockey. It's, it's really hard um, to not get injured if you were to fall. Um, it's really hard to not get injured if you get hit in football or you, you're into combat sports. Obviously, you're, you're, you're getting hit all the time. And so uh, when it comes to BMX, listen, when you're in the gym, you want to keep it safe. So um, again, I'm resting three, um, three minutes, okay? I'm trying to fully replenish uh, ATP, CP, okay? We talked about that a couple lives a couple weeks ago. ATP, CP is the main energy uh, of any kind of explosive energy under 10 seconds. After that, we're moving into a different metabol uh, metabolic system, which is the glycogen system. So ATP, CP, if you guys are working out in the gym, it's very important, especially at higher, higher weights, lower reps, and, and obviously a more, uh, a harder perceived effort, you definitely want to get at least three minutes, three minutes of recovery in between each set. So I'm actually watching the clock right next to the live ticker. I don't see any comments. My water heater is making noise because I, my significant other is actually taking a shower. So that's a good sign. We probably need to replace it. I'm curious to know if anyone has, has any questions. What is going on? Any questions, man? We got like a couple dozen people watching. Again, if you guys are just tuning in. Um, I'm doing a quick lunch workout and I'm sharing my workout. Um, about, we're about 15 minutes into this live session at this moment. And I'm doing single leg barbell step ups. And my goal was, my goal is to do three sets. Okay. So three sets of three. I'm about to get into the next one. Um, Want to talk to you about breath work though. I've been getting into that lately. As you guys know, I'm always exploring, always learning, always growing. I, I don't pretend like I know everything. Not at all. In fact, everything that I teach, I want to have personal experience and dive into. So um, I want to talk to you about breath work and cold immersion. If you guys are around, if you guys want to stick around after this set, and then we're going to move on to another exercise. People are coming in and out. This is cool. If anyone could comment, that would be fantastic. My legs are definitely feeling... They're feeling it, man. They are feeling it. This is, this is not easy for me. I and mean, then this is... This has taken me a lot of courage to go up to this weight and go live, but I, I like it because it's keeping me accountable and it's keeping me focused. All right, so let me give me about a minute here. We'll go through this and then we'll talk about breath work here in a moment as I am taking a couple deep breaths myself. Not easy. For you older guys, if you guys can get up to your body weight doing this, you guys are gonna have a lot of power coming out of the gate, have a great acceleration for the first jump. Wow. I'm definitely at failure, I can feel it. Wow, I didn't realize I was going to do a maximum effort workout today. I know, I got my J-Cups behind me, probably them in front of me, but the problem is my cage isn't big enough. And if I had it facing the other way, you guys wouldn't be able to see me. So forgive me, but I, I can do it like that. I, I wouldn't suggest taking the barbell off from behind you want to have it in front but if you're experienced it doesn't really matter so let's talk about breath work shall we um begin, been uh hearing about wim hof breathing for about four or five years now i had a couple friends that tried it here locally in san diego and finally there's a place right up the street literally one minute away by car right up the hill and um they do breath work classes and at the same time they're actually uh, offering a cold plunge and contrast therapy. Now, what's what's 
what's cold plunge, what's contrast therapy. But ba basically there's a big trend going on right now. And maybe it's just me deleting for it and seeing it, but there's a trend of cold plunge therapy, not only for athletes and recovery and whatnot, but more so for a lot of metabolic reasons um, and also a lot of brain neurotransmitter reasons. Now, being an athlete, I've had a lot of experience with uh, cold therapy, uh, whirlpool cold therapy. I've actually personally at the Olympic Training Center back as an athlete when I was in Colorado Springs back in 2003, we were invited to camp. And after one of our training sessions, I went into the training room and they had a, 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 a cold whirlpool bath. And I got in there and I stayed in there too long. I think the water was probably, it wasn't that bad. I think it was like around 55 degrees um, Fahrenheit, which is about 15 degrees Celsius. And, but the problem was, is that it actually had a motor where it was pushing the water around and moving cold water is brutal. So this cold plunge over, over here up the street, it's actually just, it's just around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's just a big pool. Um, not that big, actually. It's, it's more like a 10 by 12, 10 by 12 foot. And I think it goes to about three feet deep and you just sit in it. And it's really challenging, man. Like what I have found, um, and I spoke about this at the live last live session was I found that, um, I was really challenged in terms of adrenaline pumping. Okay. So as I'm talking, I'm going to keep moving forward here. And, uh, there's my dog. There's a puppet dog. Um, let's set up for, I am going to do some. Actually, I'm going to do some Bulgarian split squats. Let's do that. We'll set up for that. So um, cold plunge therapy, uh, what I found is uh, super beneficial for the neurotransmitter party, right? You jump in and immediately your body goes into a state of shock. You start to dump a bunch of adrenaline, nor norepinephrine, and that's basically putting you in a fight or flight mode. Now, the challenge is while you're in that fight or flight mode, you know that you know, sitting in a cold plunge, you're not going to drown. You're, you know, you're, it's not, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're nothing's going to happen. So you know that consciously, but unconsciously your body's doing the right thing. It's dumping adrenaline and what you're trying to do, uh, what, what, it, what that's going to do is send a signal to tell you to get the F out, get out because you're going to die. And it, it's pumping a bunch of adrenaline. It's raising up your heart rate. Your breath goes up and you need all those superpowers in an effort to, overcome adversity, right? And so the challenge is while the adrenaline is dumping, the challenge is to relax and get one with the breath and just sit in it and be mindful. Uh, and, and, and really at the end of the day, I'm finding that that is the biggest challenge is being able to deal with stress. In this case, it's a physical stress, but really truly it's, if you guys ever tried cold plunging, it's really emotional, mental stress, just like everyday stress. So what I'm finding for me personally, again, I'm not, of course, I love the athletic benefits and we could talk about that. But me personally, my biggest deletion of doing cold plunge therapy so far is that I love the challenge of getting into that flow meditative state, getting to my breath and being able to relax under duress, right? And that's so key, especially when we get older. And the other benefit that I'm finding is the sustained dopamine that you get after a cold plunge, kind of like a workout, like I'm working out right now. So I'm dumping a bunch of dopamine. I'm, I'm getting a lot of reward. The baseline goes up after a cold plunge. Not only does it come up, but it stays up and it's sustained throughout the day I'm finding, which is awesome. So I'm not finding myself um, moving towards pleasure, moving towards things that can give me instant reward or gratification, like, you know, like sweets, a cell phone or, or, you know, going on social media or, you know, taking a quick break to watch television or, you know what I mean? Like I'm really hyper-focused because I'm already rewarded. So I, my mind is not seeking anything and I'm able to focus on the task at hand. And I'm finding that I'm definitely more productive. So, you know, if you're an older guy, BMX racer or a parent, and you, you know, you guys are already in the field of high performance. If you guys are sitting here watching me live, you guys are in the field of high performance. And I would highly suggest, and I presuppose that you guys are high performers back at home. And I think that's really important, especially if you guys have kids or if you're a performer at the BMX track. Listen, what happens at the, out, out at the track for your kid or for yourself, it, 
it's really a true mirror of what's happening at home or at the office. So I really think that it's beneficial for all you older BMXers to take care of yourself and work on performance in terms of the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, all four of those bodies are really important um, because the, the parent or the older rider that shows up, you're really a reflection of the practice that you bring to the event, if you will. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Let me get this set up for bulking split, split squats and we can talk more. Um, so, you know, the, the breath work is really cool because um, it also kind of has a lot of those benefits of, of, uh, of adrenaline. And um, I gotta get this set up. This is taking me a minute. The adrenaline, the breath work, the, the mindfulness. And I, I thought that Wim Hof was a gimmick at first, but then I've, I've seen the science and it's amazing what that guy has done. And he's, he could, he could be easily perceived as crazy, but the guy solved his own PTSD and anxiety and depression on his own, figuring it all out. So I'm going to take this and show you guys one of my favorite, favorite single leg workouts. If you guys do it properly, Did I get that right? One, two, three. One, two, no. One, two, three. No. This is too, too low. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this barbell and then I'm going to set it right here. We're going to take a pad for my foot to rest on, which is right here. One of these pads. Again, if you guys are jumping Live. I'm just doing a quick workout. I decided to spontaneously go live, so please forgive me if you guys don't know what's going on. And the theme today really is all about working out as an older athlete. So, so I'm setting up my bar, okay, and to do a Bulgarian split squat. And this is really nice because it's going to get my hip joint right below the knee joint. Okay, so I'm going to get a big flex, right, big demand in that hamstring. We're isolating the glute, getting that triple extension as if we're coming out of the gate. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some bar, some dumbbells here in a moment. Not just yet, but in a moment. And I'll do a few, a few of these. I'm just kind of, right now I'm just kind of warming up and configuring and reminding the muscle memory of what my body can do with this exercise. Really simple setup. I like this as opposed to like getting like a box and doing it, like, like that feels kind of weird to me. That feels weird on like the top of my foot. Does that make sense? So I like how this round circumference allows my ankle to sit in into that pocket and articulate this movement and support this whole back leg and allows me to just really focus without having to worry about balancing and falling over. I can really focus on that front leg and extend all the way through. And today we're working on unilateral exercises in an effort to save the lower back for older dudes like myself. Um, okay, so let's grab some, some dumbbells. Tonight we're going live. I wasn't able to go live last night, Tuesday. You know, Monday, Tuesday, I typically go live, but I wasn't able to do it because my birthday was on Monday and, you know, if we had a, we had, you know, a celebration on Monday and then Tuesday, I need to recover, you know? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, yeah, you know, the older I get, the more time I need to recover from having a good time. Um, all right, so I'm getting warm, unzip the jacket. I'm not doing anything too crazy today, although I'm just picking out a few exercises. I don't do sets of five. I like five of this. You guys can go heavier and go, uh, like, a, you know, sets of two or sets of three, if you guys are looking for more power development, more force. Of course, as I go heavier, I'm probably going to go 
less in reps. So I'll put these back on the rack and grab some 40s. All right, so I don't know what's going on. No one's commenting. Usually, usually you guys will say what's up. It's really weird how no one's commenting. Hope you guys are doing well. Again, if you guys are just chiming in and going live here, doing a quick lunch workout, my heart rate's starting to increase. What are you guys doing today? I'm curious to know. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go on my other phone here and see if I can bring up this live and see if I can uh, comment because I don't see anyone interacting, which is really weird. Okay, let's go. The internet's slow, go figure. We're gonna do probably four sets of the Bulgarian split squats over there. And, uh, okay, nothing's working. So let me take off the Wi-Fi. Let's see if I can comment on the own on our own live video here. See if that's even a thing. Okay, we're we're live. Okay, I can see comments. Oh, there's hell comments. I can't see comments on. Okay, wow. Okay, so T Rom, Rad Rad, Steve Gray, uh, JP, um, Cage Moss, Brian Randolph. Uh, the Dillist, Jeb Domingos, uh, Brian Randolph, Steve Crows, um, Cage Moss. Okay, cool. Mike English, Sarah Nalivo. Okay, cool. Um, people are saying they're commenting. Brian Randolph says it's a track day. Uh, Mike English is installing a new BB and crank set. Ricardo Garcia, good to see you back, Coach G. Man, it's great to see all your guys' smiling faces. I needed a monitor to see what's going on with the comments. Because, <laughs> like, on this right here, I cannot see... Uh, the comments. It's it's really weird. So, um, Darren Ross, Ryan Cura gives a big double bicep. Awesome stuff, man. I love you guys. Uh, Steve Crow says he did his barbell workout this morning. Basically, the bar clean and snatch with overhead press, then lower behind the neck and go down into a full squat. That's great. Uh, then, yeah, you know, it, you didn't do a whole lot of weight, he said, basically the bar. And I think that's really smart. You know, Steve, like, Steve is definitely over 50. Um, I'm right there, um, uh, I'm, I'm 49 now. And so, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you just have to get rid of the ego and just go with what you know and not be ashamed to do lower weight. I mean, right now I'm doing uh, split squats and I'm gonna go up to 80 pounds. That's still modest weight for me um, or, or for, you know, um, really any older athlete, I, I really think, oh, I shouldn't say that. Actually, I think a lot of you guys can probably go heavier. Um, but still, you know, 80 pounds for one leg is still a, lot of, still a lot of work. All right, so let me get a set in. So tonight we're gonna go live and we're gonna talk about recovery and the importance of recovery. And I'll give you guys a little secret insight right now. We're gonna recover Nutritional recovery, some physical recovery, okay? And also um, some emotional mental recovery. And then we're gonna talk about the importance of those different recoveries, right? Those different components of recovery and you know the order of recovery, how we wanna recover immediately once the event is done. And then perhaps how do we wanna recover um, for nutritional recovery, okay? Um, and then any physical secrets, right? Some physical recovery, some massage, some metabolic uh, waste flush, perhaps some, we'll talk about cold tubs. Uh, there's a trend of that, you know, BMXers, we like to go back to the hotel, if you will, and fill the ice bath up to, you know, Lake Heights and put some ice in there from, from the local ice machine, <laughs> go to the ice machine and just drain all the ice it up and get in there and just and just suffer right and so we'll talk about not only using that as an opportunity to reduce edema swelling uh, of the legs but also the timing of it because I've just been doing a lot of research on uh, cold immersion therapy and there's actually some studies that indicate that 
um, doing cold therapy immediately after workout, if, if you guys are looking for hypertrophy uh, benefits, like doing a lot of repetition and looking to grow your muscle, it's actually advisable to do it later in the day. Um, I don't know what the timing is on that. I, mean, I need to do some hard research, but it, it seemed like the, the general consensus was at least four to six hours. If wait as long as you can. So that's, that's presupposing you're getting your workout done in the morning and then you're able to have some kind of access. If you have a bathtub at home or if you have the ability to go to a, a place that offers a cold plunge therapy that you can actually do that. Um, all right. So we'll, I like this weight for me, uh, 80 pounds. Um, we'll do a couple more sets and then I'm going to end on a couple, couple, uh, core exercises and we'll talk more about tonight's live episode. Good to see your guys' smiling faces. Well, let's take a look at the comments. Um, I got two phones here, so I got this phone here. This The, the main camera doesn't show me. Um, Josh Petruki says, pump track day. Heck yeah. 4130 Roar says, hey coach, hey, what's going on? Um, Jeff Domingo says, I'm 53, did four sets of seated single leg stand-ups. Cool. Seated. That's almost like an oxymoron, seated leg stand-ups. Um, man, I, 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 you got to send me, you got to DM the video what that looks like. Four sets of jump rope, two minutes each, trying some double jumps in there. Two four exercises, four sets. Uh, four sets of box jump, 18-inch box. Dude, good for you, man. At 53, that, you know, you got to get in what you can put in. Like, you got to get in where you can fit in, right? Like, you don't need to be doing a whole lot of uh, um, heavy weight, but... And, and, oh, and he says he will do. He's going to send me, yeah, DM me, uh, BMX coach on Instagram. That would be great. I'd love to take a look at that. And um, Brian Randolph says, 45 here, you had me at old guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just a number, right? Like, because I, I feel pretty darn good. And I, th I would say that your BMXer today that's older, um, you know, you guys are all high-performance athletes. You guys are athletes, man. And it's important to be high-performance Everywhere you go, all the time, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, right? In the kitchen, you know, thinking about high performance, thinking about uh, the future of, you know, getting older, right? It's going to depend on how, how well you're taking care of yourself now. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, the older we get, I was talking to Jeff, um, Man, I think it's great doing some single-legged work while you're older is definitely a little bit more beneficial than doing bilateral work like a squat. Three. Because bilateral work, which I still love and I still do, I don't go too heavy on it, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll get up to you know my body weight and I'll just try to move the weight as fast as I can. And if I want to impose a more force demand to develop power, to keep progressing my power in terms of acceleration, gate start acceleration, first jump acceleration, then I'm gonna use the unilateral step up exercise or even a Bulgarian split squat exercise as such in an effort to um, Forgive me, I'm catching up with my breath. In an effort to develop force, forceful power, right? You know, power is force times acceleration or force times velocity, excuse me, in this case, sometimes it's known as mass times acceleration, but in terms of moving weight, we, we like to look, or, or in terms of like BMX, athletic, it's, it's force, how much force, how much weight you're moving, how fast you're moving it. So, and I think in the case of an older athlete, it's all about, we could get more by doing unilateral work. All right, let's take a look at the comments. We'll rest for a couple minutes and try to replace ATP, CP, adenosine, triphosphate, creatine phosphate. Of course, not to be confused with simply drinking water. Your body has to produce it naturally and in the way of utilizing food stuff that's in the body. Jay Guns BMX says, hey coach, Mike English says, I have, I have better results for sprints without gloves. I'm often torn between safety of hands and heat dissipation. That, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard that one before, man. Thank you very much for sharing that. 
Jake says, your winter intervals are clutch, been on them for a while now. Yeah, dude, good for you, man. You know, intervals, intervals are tough, man. They're, they're, you gotta, you, you gotta dig deep for intervals because um, while doing the work isn't tough, it's the recovery and then getting into the next interval that's really not only physically tough, but it's, it's, it's mentally challenging, right? Because you're suffering and your body's full of metabolic waste and you know, you're, you're burning and you're hurting and you're breathing hard. And some of you guys are even on the cusp of throwing up, but, but intervals are really good and, and, and they pay off for sure, especially for a lot of uh, short nights of local racing. Or if you go to the world championships where you're racing every 20 minutes, it's important. Um, Jeff Domingo says, I'm glad you're going to talk about rest and recovery. Everyone says, listen to your body. It will tell you what it ne when it needs to rest. But if I listen to my body, I'll rest all the time. <laughs> yeah, dude, you know, <laughs> I'm Jeff, my hands raised up with you, man. I am um, rest is key, right? I love to recharge the batteries. I mean, you know, right now I have, you know, I got, I got a couple of batteries right here and they're charged, right? They're not flashing. They're fully charged. I like to be fully charged because you never know, man. You never know when the window of opportunity of that sun that that rain goes away and the sun opens up and you get that phone call uh that, you know from from like my friend jason richardson who lives literally down the street and he's like hey let's go for a ride g and i'm like okay yeah you know i'm ready to go i, I usually i'm like dude i'm flat i'm depleted i i'm resting and um jay gun says uh the intervals pay off though 100 percent yes you know interval work you shouldn't be spending more than 45 minutes doing interval work so it's a 45 minute session, right? Like there's no need to be doing two hours worth of intervals. That, that sucks. Even in road cycling, when we're riding, you know, when we're riding bikes like that, okay? Um, the S works there. Um, you know, the intervals, we'll do that interval training. If, if I'm doing, if I'm doing more, something more specific towards BMX where I'm working in like zone six, zone seven, one to two minute long intervals, um, I won't do more than eight minutes of total work. And I would say the session's probably no longer than a half hour, right? 20 minutes to warm up, 30 minutes of work, 40 to 50 minutes, under an hour, done, flat. All right, let's get another set in and then we're going to go into some core work. This is pretty cool. I'm glad to see you guys. It's good to see your smiling faces and commenting. I really appreciate that. You guys are keeping me accountable in this workout, right? Keeping me accountable. So if I'm not doing well, if my form is off, crack the whip, leave a comment, put me in check. You know, I, I, I benefit from coaching too. All right, so we're just doing some, I'm not going too heavy on these and to be honest with you, I can only go up to uh, 50s, so because that's all I have. Sometimes you just have to do what the resources you have, right? If I go to a gym, I can probably, you know, go up more in weight, but you know, at the end of the day, listen, I, I'm not looking to break my body down too much. You know, that's the thing when I get, when you get older, you realize there's a lot less to prove and I'm finding that it's okay. Okay, if, if, if you're older, it's okay to leave a little bit on the table. It's okay to leave a little bit at the track. You don't necessarily have to go after that, that extra set, that extra rep, that one last gate start. It's not get what you, what you can intuitively. You're going to know when you're at, when you're fulfilled and you're satisfied, right? It's all about emotionally and mentally being tuned with the physical body, knowing that you're satisfied and you're fulfilled you've had enough and you're completely 100% congruently okay with walking away from the training session, right? Like right now, um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So, uh, but I feel like I could do one more set uh, without, without burning out all the fuel, okay? I, I, you have to understand how much fuel you have. Um, because, you know, although this is a big physical effort, we tend to forget that when it comes to training, it's definitely a mobile and mental energy required in an effort to focus. It, it really is. I mean, your brain takes up a, a lot of 
it requires a lot of fuel for it to operate, right? Just like the cell phone. Going live here, I'll probably end up burning the battery out quicker. Uh, any other comments that you guys got? Let's go up to some of these other comments at rest. In between, Cage Ma says, I'll send you a few videos of some of my races. Can you please review them and help me figure out what I can do to improve? Um, Darren Ross, I do this with kettlebells and 10 pound ankle weights on. Um, oh, Jeff Minga says, what size is that box you're stepping on? Yeah, I just measured it. It's actually around 14 inches. That's actually a custom made box. It's funny, true story. I didn't have a squat rack for about a year because when we moved into this place, we bought this place and the, the garage is, the ceiling's actually uh, lower as opposed to the last house. I had a taller squat rack and it wouldn't fit in here. So we, um, so I waited a long time and in, 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 the, in the interim, I, I kept my weights, I kept my, my barbell, but I, I've handmade a couple of these boxes. I repurposed the wood from the built-ins that were over there. And um, so what I did was I actually built these boxes so I could put, so I could put a Olympic barbell with full-size weights on top of the boxes so I could do a rack pull, right? A rack pull is basically like this. I'll show you guys, if you guys don't know. But this is one of my favorite old man exercise to do, <laughs> right? Is basically doing a deadlift with a barbell starting just above the kneecap, okay? I love that. Uh, as a full body maintain maintenance exercise. All right, that's, that's why I do that. Actually, I should probably set that up. I, sh I should do some of those. Um, all right, I don't wanna get too scattered here. I gotta watch the time, it's one o'clock. Hope you guys are doing well. What other questions do you have? Oh, Mike English says, I haven't seen this live workout before. I'm able to set myself up to participate on my own. When, when do you do these quick workouts? This is the first one I've ever done. I, I, this is not, by no means I'm gonna be like, hey, you know, on a regular basis. L listen, uh, Mike, it's raining outside. Wednesday, I typically do this big group ride. I'm gonna keep moving here. And it's raining outside, to, so spontaneously I decided to do a, a workout in the garage. But that's actually a good idea. That would be funny, I should probably put some workout videos together. <laughs> but you know, it's, it would be hard, right? Because I don't think everyone has the luxury of a squat rack. Certainly, I guess you can go to a gym, but it'd be weird to, I would like to see you guys stay off the phone while at the gym. Okay, cool, that, that felt really good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this for rack pulls. And I'll show you what one of my favorite exercises Probably be beneficial if I talk towards the camera here. Again, if you guys are just tuning in, we're live. Spontaneously live, I decided to go live um, while working out. All right, so I got that set up. And I'm gonna throw some weight on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one set to configure the movement so my body, the muscle memory of the movement is turned on. All right, this is 100 pounds, it's not too heavy. And again, the barbell starts right above the kneecap. I get a nice wide stance. I, I like to do a, um, a wrap grip, if you will. Okay, and I look at this exercise actually as a full body exercise that really engages the core. I like this exercise, especially if you guys want to work on your second pedal acceleration position. Really good exercise. All right, let's put some weight on there. It 
if you guys are used to doing deadlifts, this is, you're going to find that this is kind of a very easy exercise and that you guys can put on a lot of weight. But in the case of me, I don't do a whole lot of weight anymore. It just, my diet for lifting heavy weight, just like my nutritional diet, the, the amount of volume of what I can eat has greatly diminished and I think that's okay. Um, Randolph says at 45, how many leg days a week do you suggest? Well, you know, it depends if you guys go to the track, what kind of sprint sessions you do. I would say, at, at, you know, at least one, at least one. Um, me personally, I don't really compete, although I shouldn't say that because I show up to group rides and, um, you know, the ego in me wants to come out and play from time to time. Uh, you know, not, not maliciously, very nicely. And um, so it's good for me to work on my gym fix. Hopefully, it looks like it. All right, so uh, rack pulls, 185 pounds, my own body weight. I don't know, maybe I'll do anywhere from three to five. This is a real spontaneous workout, so let's see how it goes. Lightweight, nothing crazy. And what I do is I stay engaged the entire time. So I don't really let the bar like rest on the safety. I keep it engaged because I want that, I want that rebound effect. I want, I want to be able to, I want to be able to counter going down and then come back up, right? Kind of like that Newton's third law reaction effect. Let's keep moving. I'm gonna put some more weight on this thing. Cause let's, we'll go up to maybe like 225 here. Let's go wide. Let's see if you guys can see. I want to keep you guys. I need to keep an eye on you guys. All right, so something like that. Um, we'll put another 30 pounds on each side and just go up, right? All the way up. Put another one on. All right, let's count the weight, man. Let's get this right. Now, everything's in kilos because I got rid of, well, I do have one set of old-fashioned steel rust, rustable, uh, non-rust resistant um, iron, but I really love these uh, competition Ivanka rubber bumper weights that I bought probably 25 years ago. So everything's in kilos, so we got to go 20 kilo, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80 plus 30. 80 plus 30. What is that? So not bad. 242 pounds. And let's change up the angle. All right, so we can get in it. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. If you guys are just tuning in, Greg Romero here doing a home workout. Spontaneously decided to go live and uh, share the workout with you and share, you guys, share with you guys some tips. All right, so this is definitely heavier. I can feel it right off the hop. So I definitely want to think about a little bit more core strength, engage that core, and then I'm going to want to sit back on it a little bit, perhaps throw my shoulders back, kind of like if you guys were to start a deadlift. I, when I do a deadlift from the ground, I, I immediately think about throwing my shoulders back. I don't want to do this one, right? I want, I want the shoulder and the knee and the hip joint to come up simultaneously with the knee and the hip joint, right? You don't want to take it in all, in all in your lower back here. So you definitely want to be as upright as you can. And so I'm going to keep my chin up and drive through the heels of my feet, not the ball, of, not on the toes. It's heavy. And we'll do three. Or we'll do five. I feel it. That's good. All right, if I, you know, getting older, if I'm going to do a bilateral exercise and go heavy, this is going to be the one. Um, the center of gravity, the center of gravity is not so much on my lower back. It's more pushed forward. So I'm able to gauge, engage my, um, my core, my glutes, and my quads evenly. 
pressing evenly through the, the ball foot to the back of the heel. And uh, so something like this, like I wouldn't be able to squat, you know, 250 to 300 pounds. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I have no desire to. But something like this is great because it forces me to hold it. The center of gravity is really good on... When I speak of center of gravity, this is a term that we use in uh, Olympic weightlifting. Basically, center of gravity is... Listen, if you were to have, you know, a barbell um, on your back, then the center of gravity is going to be more right here. If you were to have the barbell on the front doing a squat rack, center of gravity is going to be more through here, okay? So in the case of doing a rack pull, center of gravity is more evenly distributed. There's not a big emphasis on my lower back. All right, guys, so we'll do a couple more sets of this, answer a few more questions, and then... We are out. My English says it motivated me to at least pick up the dumbbells while watching. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Um, yes, we're going live tonight, uh, probably around 5.30. And uh, man, having a lot of fun with you guys. There's a small group of you guys in here joining me for the workout. We'll do another set of these and then uh, we'll answer a few more questions. This is probably not the most exciting live video, but at least there's some movement, right? All right, so set of five. And we're gonna do three sets of five and be done. I'm not, I'm not gonna get greedy. I'm not gonna put on more weight and do more. And I'm certainly not gonna do more than five five reps per set. We'll rest three minutes and we'll answer a few more questions and then I'm going to take off. I'm going to need to eat. Um, basic BMX says, <laughs> what's up Basic BMX? That's my boy LAD, Derek in the Bay Area. Brian, doing legs every day so you are smoked come race day. <laughs> and Buzz has a chance. That's great. Uh, yes, happy birthday. Thank you very much. It was on Monday. Great time. And, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't really big in birthday celebrations um, through a, a small window of my life, but I really do appreciate them. And I think everyone should, too. I think it's awesome. And at the same time, living, living every day as if it's your birthday, truly, because honestly, the birthday just felt like another awesome day. Um, honestly, I, that's just how I approach it these days, man. Just every day is a blessing. Every day is an opportunity. Every day is an, uh, an opportunity to connect with people and and, and an opportunity to bring the, the, the love, joy, and awesomeness, right? And, and genuinely doing it from a place of, of inner, inner strength and peace, not, not, not an act, right? Not an act. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, all right, so we're gonna do one more set and then we're gonna take off. Thank you very much, guys, for showing up. We went live for an hour, this is crazy. Um, tonight, we're gonna go live and we're gonna talk about recovery and the importance of recovery, say, at a race, more importantly, at a race, because, I mean, we while we talk about recovery after a training session, I think if we talk about recovery after a race, then you'll have the epiphany, the light will go off and be like, okay, I can apply this recovery to just about everything and anything I do physically, right? So I think that's really important. Um, oh, we have another question coming in. Uh, Ricardo Garcia says, I'm 43. How much max weight should I do on the squats? Man, you know what's funny? I raced at 43. I raced the world championships back in 2017. And honestly, I didn't even go that heavy on squats. I weigh, I, at the time, I weighed 100 and, around 180 pounds. And the, the, the main exercise that I did leading up to that at the age of 43 is this exercise right here. And I want to say I probably got up to like 350, 365 pounds. Now, I'll tell you this. I'll give you guys a little secret. You know, if you guys could squat two times your body weight, dude, you guys are doing better than most of the world in terms of athletic performance, right? Elites, outstanding elites need to be squatting at least two and a half times your body weight, okay? And at the end of the day, if you're 43, it just depends on what your goals are, right? If you're just racing local cruiser, listen, a, a squats utilizing your body weight or one and a half times your body weight would be 
would suffice enough to adequately come out of the gate with power, react, get into your second pedal and accelerate all the way down to the first jump, right? And be competitive. Um, but if you're just joining us live now, Ricardo, uh, we did talk about doing a uh, unilateral work. I was actually doing some uh, Bulgarian split squats a minute ago. And then I was also doing um, single leg step ups with a barbell on the back, uh, utilizing a, a 14 inch uh, box right there. And so I got up to my body weight, which is 175 pounds. And I did uh, three sets of three each leg. And I was definitely working in that 85% perceived rep maxed area, right? Three sets of three, the third, third set of each, I'm sorry, the third rep of each set felt pretty challenging. I was getting into a compromised, uh, a compromised um, form position, if you will. I was compromising my form and that's where you kind of want to go uh, in an effort to maximize uh, the benefits of, of maximizing your power potential in a lift like that. So I like doing this, the unilateral stuff because you don't have to go super heavy, right? Again, the theme is all about training as, as an older rider. And so we want to talk about preserving our lower back, right? Um, our discs tend to move towards degeneration. And what we want to do is we actually want to promote hydration in, in, in the spacing of, of each uh, facet joint of each uh, disc in between each vertebrae, if you will, actually, not the facet joint. Uh, hopefully there's no chiropractors in here that are going to criticize my vocabulary. I am not a chiropractor. I don't pretend to be one, but I still got your back just like a chiropractor, guys. That's why I'm your coach, and that's why um, I'm definitely interested in in helping you guys, helping you guys succeed and perform and be awesome, man. Because I've been fortunate enough to have awesome coaches and plenty of awesome people in my corner to help me succeed, and, and it's all about paying it forward, right? All right, one more set. We're gonna do a set of five. We're at 242 pounds. 110 kilos, I gotta focus. Give me a moment. <sighs> Woo, that was good. You know, it's funny, I was thinking of doing core, but I don't think I need to do core because that right there, that challenged my core a lot, which I really loved. Um, I'm pretty much done. Any advice for BMX club coaches? Yeah, man. At the end of the day, you guys, it's all about reports. It's all about communication when it comes to any kind of coaching. Right now, I'm having a hard time getting a report with you guys, but I'm doing my best because I can't see your smiling faces. But I got to presuppose that you guys are in a, the, the correct state. But it's all about when it, when it comes to coaching at a club level, a local level, in which I really love. I love I love working with local, especially beginner riders, man, because their their eyes light up and they they just get excited and it's so fun. To, it's so so gratifying to see someone um, accomplish and get over uh, a fear, if you will, and, and conquer something. And and I love those moments. But Ricardo Garcia says thanks uh, for all the advice, man. Um, but yeah, but back to the advice for club coaches, man. Communication's key. It's huge, right? Like. Um, not acting like an authoritarian um, and getting more into rapport, right? Really connecting with your client, really connecting with the person that you're talking to and not talking down to them. And, and I see that a lot. So what you want to do is you really want to be able to connect with somebody and get them forward thinking that they can do it, right? Not forcing them that they can do it, but getting them to... Really, at the day, coaching is simply this. You guys ready? Get a pen and paper. Coaching is all about influencing somebody to influence themselves. That's all that coaching is. That's all it ever was. That's parenting. That's relationships. That's that's coaching. That's mentoring. That's guiding. That's influencing, right? Influencing somebody to influence themselves. If you guys can harness that power, then man, your communication is going to be solid. They're really going to appreciate you. They're going to they're going to be like, hey, coach, you really get me. I really appreciate him. Um, and and they're really going to be able. They're going to be compliant with everything that you ask them to do. Coaching comes down to rapport. Comes down to communication. Um, that's my best advice, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys later on five thirty. Call it five thirty. We're going to talk about recovery. 
Um, and we're gonna talk about the importance of recovery and then the, the three pillars of recovery and in which order. So we'll talk about some nutritional recovery, we'll talk about some physical re recovery, as well as emotional and nutritional recovery. All right, guys, you guys have a good rest of your afternoon, wherever you guys are at. I'm in California, so, you know, automatically my brain's thinking that everyone's in California, but you guys are all over the world, too. So wherever you're at, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys soon.